27-year-old Sarah Mobley Hall lived in Charlotte, North Carolina in 1984 with her 10-year-old son, Derek Mobley. Sarah, a single mother, worked with children with disabilities during the day. One of those special needs kids was Derek. Everyone described Derek as a very happy kid and friendly to everyone. On March 14th of 1984, Charlotte police officers discovered a horrific crime scene at Sarah's home on Ventura Way. Someone entered their home and brutally took the lives of both Sarah and Derek. Autopsies concluded that both of them had been beaten and strangled. Detectives did a tremendous amount of work chasing down possible suspects, but the case went cold. Over the years, detectives revisited the case. In 1998, one of those investigators was Johnny Jennings. He was able to find DNA belonging to the suspect from items that were collected at the crime scene back in 1998. Unfortunately, DNA technology was not advanced enough back then to use DNA to identify the culprit. It was only recently, with genetic genealogy, that investigators could use the DNA to identify someone. After DNA testing, investigators were led to a person of interest in South Carolina. With the help of the FBI, Charlotte police got DNA samples from that person. He is 60-year-old James Thomas Pratt. Further testing confirmed that Pratt indeed was responsible for what happened to Sarah and Derek Mobley. He was arrested on February 1st of 2023 at a hotel in York County, South Carolina. He was charged with taking their lives. He is in custody and being held without bail. Investigators said that Pratt and Sarah had been in a relationship, but did not elaborate on a motive or any other details about the case, saying it's part of an ongoing investigation. In a news conference announcing the arrest, Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department Captain Joel McNelly said that forensic DNA helped lead to the suspect in a case that many have long forgotten. Society has probably forgotten about these folks. It's been a long time, he added. A lot of things have happened, but the family never forgot, and we never forgot. There's been a family that's been waiting 39 years, wondering what has happened. You can imagine sitting for four decades, not knowing what happened to your sister, not knowing what happened to your nephew, and to have this resolution is really, really important for this family. Sarah's sister, Mary Day, had this to say. It's so exciting to hear that after all these years, we are able to bring some closure. I'm just so grateful that the police have found this person, and I hope that he spends the rest of his days behind bars. Martha Marie Morrison was born in 1956 in Eugene, Oregon. She grew up in foster care. Martha attended Roosevelt High School in Portland and the Corvallis Farm School. Subsequently, she went to Arizona to participate in the Job Corps program. Martha had a history of drug use and of running away from the homes of both her biological and foster families. She was last seen on September 1st of 1974 when she visited her family with a man who she shared an apartment with. Martha quarreled with the man and then disappeared. She was 17 years old at the time. About a month and a half after Martha was last seen on October 12th of 1974, human remains of two women were found in Dole Valley near Vancouver, Washington. After the remains were discovered, the bones of the victims were examined nationwide in hopes of identifying them. One of the victims was quickly identified via dental records as 18-year-old Carol Platt Valenzuela. Carol had been reported missing on August 4th of 1974 by her husband after she failed to return home after hitchhiking to Vancouver on August 2nd. Investigators hoped that her identification would perhaps increase the likelihood of identification for the second victim. They intended to question Carol's husband, but he was recovering from an aspirin overdose at the time. He was arrested, but eventually released after passing a polygraph test on October 25th of 1974. 
All examinations were unsuccessful in identifying the second victim. It could only be estimated that she was white and between 20 to 25 years old. Forensic facial reconstructions were created of the victim from both frontal and profile views and released through a newspaper, but it went unrecognized by the public. The victim's physical description was also listed, including the fact that she had curly textured hair and dental hygiene problems. She also appeared to have given birth at some point. Police returned to the scene following the initial discovery in order to possibly obtain more evidence. A new metal detector borrowed from a Snohomish County resident was also used, but did not deliver anything useful. Examination into the two victims showed that they were deceased for at least two weeks prior to being found. Decomposition and animal activity made it difficult to estimate the cause, but authorities always believed that someone took their lives. Several missing persons at the time were considered to be the second victim, including Patty Hurst but she was later found alive. Several serial offenders, such as Gary Ridgway, Warren Leslie Forrest, and the guy on your screen whose name we can't say on YouTube was linked to the case over the years. In 2012, investigators were able to create a DNA profile for the second victim, who was still unidentified. DNA was then collected from many family members who had a missing female relative. Martha Morrison's sister and half-brother gave a sample of their DNA, and it was used to develop a genetic profile to compare to potential matches. It was compared to the DNA of the second victim. Similarities were noted, but a definite match was not established. The National Missing and Unidentified Persons System, which specializes in locating missing people and identifying human remains, eventually got involved. In July of 2015, they were finally able to confirm that the second victim found was Martha Morrison. Investigators then focused again on finding the person responsible for taking the lives of Martha and Carol. They looked into Warren Leslie Forrest. He is currently incarcerated for taking the life of Krista K. Blake in July of 1974. Forrest was arrested on October 2nd of 1974 just 10 days before the bodies of Martha and Carol were found. Law enforcement officials conducted DNA testing on a bloodstain found on an air pistol that was owned by Forrest, which was previously believed to have belonged to a different woman, one of the six others that he attacked during his years at large. Results from the DNA testing confirmed in 2019 that it was Martha's blood on Forrest's gun. He also was a suspect in the 1974 disappearance of Diane Gilchrist and the 1971 disappearance of Jamie Grissom. 73-year-old Warren Forrest's trial started in 2023. He was found guilty of all the charges against him on February 1st, after the juries deliberated for just 90 minutes. He will be sentenced on February 17th of 2023. Investigators are still working on other cases to confirm whether Forrest was responsible for them too or not.